Hello and welcome back to the video series of finite element analysis. In this video, we are going to derive the Jacobian matrix for CST. So let's get started. So in the previous video, we have seen one numerical related to constant strain triangle. So now let's see what is a Jacobian matrix for CST. So Jacobian matrix first, uh, let's understand what, what is the Jacobian matrix. So basically Jacobian matrix uh, gives the relation between the two coordinate systems, one is the Cartesian and second is the natural coordinates. So the Cartesian coordinates are X and Y as it's a 2D problem and the natural coordinates are E, Zeta and Eta. So we will develop a relation between the Cartesian coordinate system and natural coordinate system for the constant strain triangle and in terms of a Jacobian matrix. So let's start understanding this. So for this is a numerical part. So as we know in the previous videos, we have defined the equations for u and v u is equal to n1 q1 n2 q3 n3 q5 as it is the uh, deflection or de uh, deformation in x direction q1 q3 and q5 in the x direction for the y direction it is q2 q4 and q6 so this u and v are the vector representation of the intermediate point in terms of shape function of this element. Now the strain equation epsilon is written by strain in x direction, strain in y direction and shear stress in xy plane. So it is also represented as the del u by del x, del v by del y and the tau shear stress can be represented by del u by del y plus del v by del x. So this is my strain matrix. So we are supposed to find the strain matrix for the derivation of Jacobian. So by using the chain rule of partial differentiation, I can write del u by del zeta is equal to del u by del x into del x by del zeta plus del u by del y into 
del y by del theta same uh, we will do the partial differentiation of uh, u with respect to eta now so del u by del eta is equal to del u by del x del x by del eta del u by del y into del y by del eta so representing these two formulas in terms of matrix I can write on this side we can write del u by del zeta and del u by del eta is equal to the left hand side equal to the right hand side the common matrix here in these two terms the common thing is del u by del x and here in this equation del u by del y so the remaining portion can be written as del x by del zeta del y by del zeta del x by del eta del y by del eta so this matrix two cross two matrix this intermediate two cross two matrix is my jacobian matrix so which represents the relation between the cartesian coordinates x y and the natural coordinates zeta and eta so now let's understand in terms of uh, uh, cartesian system how can we write the uh, shape function so for x in terms of x it is n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 now uh, remember the values of uh, n1 n2 and n3 n1 is equal to uh, zeta n2 is equal to eta and n3 is equal to 1 minus zeta minus eta so these uh, values are already explained in the previous videos so putting all this value in the x coordinate cartesian coordinate equation eta x1 plus eta x2 plus 1 minus zeta minus eta x3 so doing the calculations we have x1 minus x3 common is zeta and x2 minus x3 common is eta plus x3 so now uh, doing the partial differentiation of uh, this system with respect to zeta first so del x by del zeta is equal to here eta is constant so till this whole a term becomes zero x3 is also constant with respect to eta so these two values will become zero and here it is the differentiation is one so this value 
will be written as x1 minus x3, which is also known as x13. Same for partial differentiation with respect to eta now. So if we do here the first term will become 0, second term will become here eta will become 1. So x2 minus x3, this third term will become 0. So it is also written as x23. Now, same procedure can be done for the y coordinate, uh, the n1, y1 plus n2, y2 plus n3, y3. Putting all the values of n1, n2, and n3, we can write theta y1, theta y2 plus. 1 minus eta minus eta into y3. So taking the common from this equation, y1 minus y3 eta plus y2 minus y3 eta plus y3. Same, uh, we can do the partial differentiation of y with respect to eta first. So the term will become y1 minus y3. So it is also written as y13. Same with respect to eta now. So here it will become y2 minus y3 is equal to y23. So now uh, we have converted the components of uh, the matrix in forms of x1, x, x13, x23, y13, and y23. So the Jacobian matrix, which we have defined earlier, here, del x by del zeta, del y by del zeta del x by del eta and del y by del eta is represented by Jacobian matrix. So putting all these value, corresponding value, the Jacobian matrix can be written as this. So replacing all these value by in terms of x and y coordinates, we can rewrite this matrix like x13, y13, x23, and y23. So now we have con converted the Jacobian matrix in terms of x and y. So now from the this equation, this equation is a Jacobian equation. So if we refer this equation here, if we make this term as a reference, this Jacobian will go here and it will convert it into inverse. So that equation can be written as del u by del x and del u by del y is equal to the inverse of the Jacobian into del u by del eta and del u by del zeta and del eta. So here J inverse is the inverse matrix of Jacobian. So it can be written as inverse of the matrix is nothing but the adjoint 
of uh, matrix and determinant of the matrix divided by determinant of the matrix so if we uh, do the adjoint of this matrix we can write the adjoint of this matrix will will be y23 minus y13 minus x23 and x13 so this is my adjoint of the matrix divided by the determinant of the matrix so uh, putting this value in this jacobian equation so the equation can be written as del u by del x del u by del y is equal to 1 upon the determinant of j into y23 minus y13 minus 2x minus x23 x13 into del u by del eta del u by del eta and del u by del eta so now we have converted the equation in terms of the determinant of jacobian matrix and in terms of value now uh, we will put this value in the very first equation that is our strain matrix equation so here we have find out the value of this strain matrix so we need to find out that portion so by putting this value we can write del u by del x del u by del y is equal to 1 upon determinant of j y23 into du by del zeta y13 del u by del eta minus x23 del u by del eta plus x13 del u by del eta now replacing the replacing the u by u by the displacement v we get a similar uh, expression which is del v by del x del v by del y 1 upon determinant of j y23 instead of u here it will be v So now we have uh, two components del u by del x and del u by del y, del v by del x and del v by del y. So using the strain displacement relationship, uh, we have to put this value in the main equation that is strain matrix equation. So here the epsilon strain matrix here you can see in the epsilon strain matrix we have to put these values so by putting those values in epsilon we will get determinant of j here common and 
by combining this equation it would be y23 q1 minus q5 minus y13 q3 minus q5 minus x23 q2 minus q6 plus x13 q4 minus q6 minus x23 q1 minus q5 plus x13 q3 minus q5 plus y23 q2 minus q6 minus y13 q4 minus q6 so this is in terms of q the displacements so now uh, from the definition of x and y we can write it in terms of uh, this form so this is this matrix is representing the epsilon b into q so where the b is equal to the determinant of j here it is y23 second is 0 y31 then 0 y12 then 0 so it it has got three rows 0 x23 0 x13 0 x121 x32 y23 x13 x21 sorry y31 x21 and y12 so uh, this uh, may be noted that all the elements of b matrix are constant and in it is expressed in the terms of nodal coordinates so this all are the nodal coordinates so we have converted the natural coordinates equation into nodal coordinates or cartesian coordinates so in this way we can generate the jacobian matrix and this is the use of jacobian matrix so hope you find it useful thank you